when should a boundary surveyor set PC monuments, property corner monuments, on a line with a, a large encroachment? I want to answer that question for you, but before I do, I want to tell you a story. Okay, this is something that happened to me recently. Uh, so I, I was working on a boundary survey, and there was a large encroachment. And uh, both sides of the, the line in dispute had hired a surveyor. So I had been hired by one side, uh, and my the, the neighbor, which was a, in this case was a government agency, had hired a surveyor of their own. And they were these two parties, the private landowner and the government agency, were fighting over the location of the line and the encroachment. Now, I go out and do my boundary survey, and I basically come up with the same location for the boundary line as the other surveyor. So this is one of those rare circumstances when the two surveyors actually agree on the location of the boundary line within a half a foot or so. It was, it was pretty close. And uh, and what was at stake here was way more than that, way more than a half a foot. It was about 55 feet. So, uh, so the other surveyor and I agree on the location of the boundary line. Now, the local government agency wanted to come in and set monuments behind my client's fence where the boundary line was located. Okay, So my client's fence encroached almost 50 feet into the, to the local government agency's uh, property. Now, the question, the important question is, should that other surveyor have come onto my client's property behind their fence to set those monuments? Okay, so this fence had been a long time, 20 years. Okay, and uh, the my client had a well behind that fence, they had fruit trees, they had they'd occupied that property for a long, long time. So I found out that the other the, the government agency surveyor wanted to come behind my client's fence to set the property con property corner monuments, and of course my client was very upset about that. She just the relationship with the government agency was not going good, and things hadn't been handled properly. Um, and there's probably some, you know, room for blame on both sides. And so uh, she called me. She was upset. She said, "Hey, that surveyor's gonna try and come out of here." Um, and they're going to try and get behind my fence and, and set corners on this boundary line. And so I said, calmed her down, and I said, let me let me make a phone call. Because I knew this other surveyor. I, I, he was a local, another local surveyor. So I called the surveyor up, and I said, hey, I need you to do me a favor, please. He said, please do not go out to set property corner monuments on that line if I'm not there to escort your crew. I said, I don't necessarily agree with the fact that you want to set those monuments, but I understand that your client's asking you to do it, and I'm not going to try and prevent you. But please do not get behind my client's fence. If I am not there to escort your crew, it is going to cause problems. He said, no problem, I understand. When can we get out to set the monuments? I said, how about next Wednesday? I've got an opening in my schedule. I can meet you there next Wednesday morning. This is on Thursday, the week before. He says, okay, great. We'll be out next Wednesday. I said, okay, I'm going to call and let my client know you're going to be out Wednesday and I will be there to escort your crew. Now, without telling me, the client has his crew show up, that the other surveyor, excuse me, had his field crew show up the next morning um, at 7 a.m. And they're banging on my client's gate to get in to set the property corner monument. So, of course, my client calls me in a panic because I just told her the night before that I was going to escort their crew the middle of the following week. So I rush, stop what I'm doing, rush out to the job site. And I get there, sure enough, the other surveyor's field crew is there to set the monuments. So I asked the field crew, I said, what's going on? I thought you guys weren't going to be here till Wednesday. I told your boss you needed an escort. He just played stupid. He said, I don't know. I'm just, I was told to come out here and set the monuments. I said, all right, I'm going to escort you on the property to set the monuments. So I calmed down my client. And I watched as the crew set the monuments. Now, they set multiple monuments on this boundary line. And I didn't disagree with where the location of the boundary line was. But there were all kinds of reasons why the boundary line might not have been the property line. And there's a difference. So I'll put, try and put a link in the comments of the video. Uh, there's a difference. Property lines can move 
right? Property lines can move, ownership lines can move. So what can move, what can move an ownership line? So let's talk about that. Now I'm gonna kind of finish up that story. Let's talk about what can move a ownership line from a from a D line or from a boundary line. Okay, so there's there's a, several different legal mechanisms that can move an ownership line. One is adverse possession. Uh, you've got a uh, boundary by agreement. You've got the legal principle of estoppel. Okay, you've got the legal principle of latches. Um, you also can have issues with prescriptive rights, which doesn't necessarily move an ownership line, but can can lead to easement rights by unwritten means. So there, there were several different, or at least, a, and there, there's probably some I'm not remembering off the top of my head. There were at least a couple different mechanisms that could have potentially moved that ownership line between my client and the adjoiner from the boundary line to the fence. But this other surveyor was actually a civil engineer. Had no, made no consideration of that, um, had no I don't even know if he, I don't even know if that civil engineer knows what unwritten rights are. Uh, and he probably doesn't even know, he probably wouldn't know a stop if it slapped him up the side of the head. He went out and established a boundary line and was bound to determine to set his corners because that's what the client told him to do. And I've seen this happen over and over again. I had another story where a, a surveyor sawed through a neighbor's wood deck because the wood deck encroached on the, on the neighbor's property, what he thought it encroached, and he sawed through the deck and set monuments every 10 feet. Like, the, the guy literally got a chainsaw out and cut through the neighbor's deck. This is crazy. Surveyors do crazy, crazy stuff. So, is this a good idea, land surveyors? <laughs> if you're a boundary surveyor, should you, sh should you set monuments on a line with, a, with an encroachment? In my opinion, it's almost never a good idea. Let me say that one more time because I want it to sink in. It's almost never a good idea to set monuments on a boundary line with a major encroachment. Okay? Why? Why not? Why is it a bad idea? Okay, I'm going to give you four reasons why it's a bad idea. Number one, it's just going to raise tension between the neighbors. Right? And in that situation, what you want to do is you want to try and reduce tension, not raise tension, right? Think about what that civil engineer did to the situation between this government agency and my client when he went out there without permission and busted into my client's gate to set those property corner monuments. Did he make that situation any better, any less emotional or intense? No, he didn't, right? He just raised tensions. Second, it leads to the destruction of property, almost inevitably. If there's an encroachment and you set monuments, one of those two neighbors is going to start destroying property. And that is really dangerous, right? It's, not only can it jeopardize the safety of the neighbors, people shoot each other, right? Or stab each other or run each other over with cars. Uh, but it also can create damages, right? That you can be liable for, or your client can be liable for in court. The fourth reason is it typically, when you set monuments on a line with encroachment like that, it harms everybody. It, it harms both surveyors and it harms both owners on both sides of the line. Nobody's going to come out better, usually in that situation. And then finally, it exposes you, the boundary surveyor, to legal liability that you don't need. So I don't care if your client tells you to set monuments on the line. If there's a major encroachment, don't do it. You got to get the encroachment fixed first. In that same story I started with, this client her neighbor to the north encroached 30 feet onto her property. And she, she she asked me if I was going to go set a monument in her neighbor's front lawn. So if the neighbor's front lawn was 30 feet into her property. And I told her, I said, I can't do that. I said, I'm not going to set that monument. I said, you and I need to go talk to your neighbor. We need to explain what's going on. We need to figure out how we're going to resolve it. Right? And then, after we have the resol whatever resolution we come up with, once we have a resolution in writing, then I will set monuments. If we adjust the line, I'll monument the new line. If we decide to leave the line, you're going to give her a license for her occupation, whatever. Like, after we have an agreement, I'll set the line. Now, imagine if I rolled up in my survey truck into that gal's front lawn, and 30 feet from where her fence was at, I dug a big old hole and started setting a monument. What would that do, right? If you don't want to do that, it's a good way to get yourself in court. Okay, so... If you're a boundary surveyor and you find an encroachment like that, I'm telling you not to set monuments until the encroachment's resolved. What can you do? What can you do in that situation? 
So I'm going to give you four things you can do. You can identify the scope and extent of the encroachment, right? So how big is the encroachment? Where is it at? You need to consider if you have uncertainty in your resolution of the boundary, because you need to be honest about that. So for example, if your deed miscloses by three feet, it doesn't do any good to argue about a half a foot encroachment most of the time, because you can't establish the line within a half foot. So think about your uncertainty. Work with an attorney to assess uh, issues related to unwritten rights and prescriptive rights. Okay, you need to do that. Those, those different legal doctrines that I talk about. And finally, this is the most important, offer solutions to your client. Right? Don't set your client up to destroy property. Don't set your client up for a big fight with a neighbor. Try and offer. There are solutions to fix encroachments. Try and offer those solutions to your client and help bring peace to the neighborhood. Don't, don't ruin the peace in the neighborhood. Okay, so those are all things you can do. You'll notice what's not on that list is to chainsaw through somebody's deck and set your property code monuments. That is not, that is not on the list. So to sum up, uh, don't be a fool. Don't give land surveyors a bad, bad name, bad reputation. Do not set monuments on property lines with encroachments. It's almost never a good idea.